Now let's take up question number 52. It states that if the sum of the cubes of zeros of this given polynomial is 71, then square root of k can be out of these options. So when we talk about the zeros of the polynomial, here this is a cubic polynomial, it will have three zeros. Let's consider they are alpha, beta and gamma. Then alpha plus beta plus gamma is minus b by a which is 5 in this case. Alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha is equal to c by a which is equal to k square in this case. And alpha into beta into gamma will be equal to minus d by a which will be minus 8 in this case. And here we are talking about sum of the cubes of the 0. So that is alpha cube plus beta cube plus gamma cube. The value of this quantity is 71. We know a special identity related to this that is alpha cube plus beta cube plus gamma cube minus 3 alpha beta gamma is equal to alpha plus beta plus gamma into alpha square plus beta square plus gamma square minus alpha beta minus beta gamma minus gamma alpha which could be for the simplified and represented as alpha plus beta plus gamma whole square minus 3 times alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha. So now we are aware with the values of this quantity. Let us substitute that here. This alpha cube plus beta cube plus gamma cube is given as 71 and minus 3 alpha beta gamma. This will be minus 3 into minus 8 that is plus 24. Next you have alpha into beta into gamma. This will be equal to 5. Then alpha plus beta plus gamma square, 5 square it is 25, then we have minus 3 into k square. So we have obtained this. When you next simplify this, here you are getting 95, 95 is reduced by 5, 19 times. So I get here 19 is equal to 25 minus 3 k square. So which could be further simplified as 3 k square equal to 6 and that reduces to k square is equal to 2. So we have obtained here k square is equal to 2. This clearly gives me the value that k will be equal to root 2. But in this case, I need to obtain square root of k. So if I take further square root here, this can be simplified and represented as equal to 2 raised to the power 1 upon 4. That is fourth root of 2. So this is the required value of root k. So now you need to focus on the options provided. Out of these options, you could clearly get the value of root k. Root k can be that is fourth root of 2. So you can definitely mark here the answer as fourth root of 2. This is the required answer which you can mark as option number 4. I hope it is clear to you. You might also think why not negative quantity of that because when we have considered square root of k here we have taken the root of the positive square root if you'll put a minus sign there it will not be valid it will not be a real quantity so we have here answer only as option number four i hope it is clear now let's take up our next question here i have the next question which states in the given figure pqrs is a parallelogram and here sq is the diagonal and Sn is to Mq is to Nq is equal to 2 is to 2 is to 1. Then which of the following is not true? So here let's first focus on this given diagram. Here in this case, when you focus on this diagram, it's been given that it's a parallelogram. So we know about the properties of parallelogram. Here Sn is to Mq is to Nq is 2 is to 2 is to 1. If I consider this x, this will be also x and this will be also x. You can see Sn will be 2x, here Mq will be 2x and Nq will be x resulting the same ratio 2 is to 2 is to 1. After that, if I consider this parallelogram PQRS as you know that here I have SR parallel to PQ. If I consider this as angle 1 and I consider this as angle 2, these are alternate interior angles, they are definitely equal. Moreover, if you consider here triangle SNR and this triangle QMP, what will happen? Here very first SR is equal to PQ. Moreover, you have this angle. Let us consider this angle to be alpha 
and this angle to be beta. Alpha is equal to beta because they are alternate interior angles and you have S n equal to 2 x and here you have Q m equal to 2 x. So, what I am getting here side angle side congruency between these two triangles. I could definitely write that. So, I have here this triangle S n r congruent to this triangle which is Q m p and they are congruent by side angle side congruence criteria. If they are congruent their corresponding parts will be also equal. So, if I consider here this one as angle 1 and here this angle as angle 3. Angle 1 is definitely equal to angle 3 because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles and you already obtained that angle 1 is equal to angle 2. So, we already know angle 1 is equal to angle 2 because they are alternate interior angles. So, if they are alternate interior angles they are equal this implies that angle 2 is definitely equal to angle 3 and when you focus on this diagram angle 2 is already equal to angle 3 they are corresponding angles and whereas when corresponding angles are equal that means the lines are parallel here AR will be definitely parallel to BP. So, I could definitely write here therefore, AR will be parallel to BP because they are corresponding angles and you have obtained that here corresponding angles are equal. Corresponding angles are equal. I hope it is clear. Now, you can clearly see if these lines are parallel it makes a parallelogram here. I definitely get that as BP will be parallel to AR, BM is parallel to AN. If this whole line BP is parallel to AR, BM is parallel to AN and here you definitely have RN parallel to BP. These both are definitely correct. Moreover, as these lines are parallel, here you can say that when I talk about SN or I talk about this point N on this line QM. Here this point M or this point N are acting as midpoints of SN and QM. So, this is a midpoint and this is a line parallel to this. If you apply midpoint theorem, midpoint theorem and through the converse of that you will definitely get that AQ is equal to AP. Here AQ is the half of PQ. As AQ is half of PQ that means AQ will be half of RS. If AQ is half of RS then twice of AQ is equal to RS. In similar manner if I apply midpoint theorem I get that AN is equal to half of PM. AN is half of PM that means you will be getting here PM is twice of AN but here reverse is given twice of PM is equal to AN. So, this is incorrect. So, in this question you had to figure out which of the following is not true and we have obtained here that in this case option number 4 is incorrect. So, I can definitely mark here the answer for this question option number 4. I hope this question is clear to you. Let us proceed with our next question. Here I have the next question number 54. It states that if the ratio of the shorter side to the longer side of a rectangle is equal to the ratio of the longer side to its diagonal. Then the square of the ratio of shorter side and the longer side is which of these option. So, what is the shorter side and what is the longer side? Let us take up a rectangle and here I am considering that shorter side is breadth and longer side is length. So, this is the length as the longer side, this is the breadth as the shorter side and it is being provided to you in this question that the ratio of this shorter side to the longer side that is B upon L is equal to the ratio of the longer side upon the diagonal and here the diagonal of this rectangle can be represented as square root of square of length plus square of breadth that is square root of L square plus B square and further you need to obtain in this case the ratio of the shorter side to the longer side in terms of numeric value. So, we need to obtain value of this quantity that is B upon L. So, let us consider here 
that B upon L is equal to some quantity K and we will be trying to obtain the value of K. Let us express this whole in terms of B upon L. So, this is B upon L. If you divide here the numerator and denominator with L, then you will obtain here 1 upon square root of 1 plus B upon L whole square. Let us substitute B upon L by K and see what you obtain next. So, if you substitute it by K, you get here K is equal to 1 upon square root of 1 plus K square. So, we have obtained this quantity. If you square up both the sides, you will generate an equation here. And this is giving you the value k raised to the power 4 plus k square is equal to 1. So, we have obtained this equation in place of this. If I consider that k square is x, then I get the equation x square plus x minus 1 equal to 0 where k square is equal to x. So, if I apply quadratic formula here on application of quadratic formula, I get here the value of x equal to minus 1 plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac that is 1 plus 4 whole by 2. So, here we need the value of x that is the ratio of length and breadth, it cannot be negative. So, I am ignoring here the negative value of x and I am getting here k square in place of x, I get here that k square will be equal to minus 1 plus root 5 upon 2. This is the value of k square and earlier we have considered that k is equal to b upon l. So, this is square of the ratio of shorter side to the longer side that is root 5 minus 1 whole by 2. So, in this case when you observe the options provided, you can clearly see that is present here in option number 4 and you can definitely mark here the answer for this question as option 4. So, here we get the required answer as option 4. I hope it is clear to you. Now, let us take up our next question.